And with that being said, it is what it is. Welcome back or welcome back to the Technus Corner. I am your host, Seb Luca. Why don't you guys step right on in? I guess it didn't clickbait you, yeah? but it is a somewhat of a versus of an affair today, at least in the eyes of yourselves, especially in relation to what is our items that are sporadically sprawled out across the table. I just had them lying about here just like that. And I thought this was a great time to make a video on this topic. And what topic is it? Well, water versus air cooling. And which is, more importantly, better for you. Let's get started. It's show and tell time, guys. Show and tell. And we've got an array of coolers to demonstrate the differences and or aneurysms and take home sakes that you guys have to consider in relation to which cooling mechanism essentially is better for you all. So uh, let's get stuck right on in. But first, a word from our sponsors. If you need to upgrade your space, and if you're feeling like it's a frame race, fuck that marketplace. Come to Techco, Techco. With every thousand dollar purchase, there's a free fruit basket thrown in. So you're feeling out of place and you want to join the master race. It's easy. It's easy at TechCore. Come down to TechCore where you can buy yourself a GPU with a thrown in power supply that will never power it and end up being a brick. It's a massive commercial place. And if you can't get to our space, means you're an idiot, but we're online in your face. TechCore, TechCore. So guys, it is what it is. I apologize. That's just our sponsors that we have to uh, portray in the good lighting. But speaking of lighting, here in the lighting that we have to display, we have some show and tell today. So welcome all, welcome back to the Technus Corner. Come in Z and let's get into what is water versus air cooling. Water versus air cooling, cooling, cooling. Let's start off with the big boys. So the big boys, you guys like 360 millimeter AIOs, okay? That is your water induced, filled, sealed, all in one liquid AIO. Um, that's a 360 millimeter ad. Two 120 millimeter fans will make a 240 millimeter radiator. And one 120, like for example, the Alienware, there's the Alienware logo, is enough to, I guess, cool their pedigree. $5,000 systems, um, at least according to Steve Burke from Gamers Nexus, worthwhile checking out his Alienware breakup of the pre-build. Uh, I believe it failed dismally. So that's something to look into. On the other end of the spectrum, starting off small, because I know I don't want to scare you guys away. If you're after just replacing, say, a stock cooler, and you haven't got much space to build in the case, sometimes big is not always the best option. And a better option would be to go low profile, like this Silverstone AR11 cooler. It's got four copper pipes that uh, go into a flattened out section for the IHS to connect to. And it is very, very proficient, providing that you are not using a high powered CPU because it is rated accordingly. Now we'll get into more about those ratings just in a second, but speaking of ratings that are rated accordingly, for example, if you're after something that 
sort of matches a 240 millimeter radiator quite easily and comfortably 280 millimeter radiator providing that the air is of course of the right coolness as well because for every one degree ambient in your room your cpu will be 0.95 of a degree hotter so remember it's all about the air cooling in your room as well but bringing us to one of the big boys in the air departments and air fields is a dark rock pro 4 cooler and it's got essentially it's got seven bins coming out both sides connected to a nickel plated copper block that connects up to your ihs on top of your cpu obviously and it's darked out black and it just costs over a hundred bucks australian so they they price out the noctuas and they perform just as well these come with two fans you can add a third as well for a push pull pull configuration depending on how you want the air to flow if you want to be more feverish with it and attack it with a third it gives you mounts for a third fan you have to supply your own fan but these are really proficient and they work upwards of 250 tdp regarding the watts capability so it's something to look out for dark rock pro 4 i stand by them i've got a couple of them right here as we speak and these are compatible with all your cpus upwards until fred ripper and speaking of fred ripper they've got one that's exactly like that that just fits a fred ripper better so remember fred rippers nowadays you do need something that's a little bit larger to cover the fred ripper don't believe what linus tech said a couple of years ago when it didn't matter uh, it does guys it does if you cherish your cpu you'll cover it properly regardless because an ihs is an integrated heat spreader okay that's the top part of a cpu an integrated heat spreader that's what you call it it spreads the heat so you know if it's centered it's spreading it still get me mm, not rocket science anyway i don't want, want to be an asshole about it but let's press forward eh? something on the side note you don't have to worry about with aios is memory clearance so memory clearance with aios is not a problem because you can just pump that into the spot that the cpu goes imagine that being the cpu just there and your memory will just go bang 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 on the side unfortunately when it comes to these big coolers we've got this one this time you're at the whim of the available space so check the clearances because dominator ram things like that ain't gonna work sometimes the fans are maneuverable up and down for added clearance in relation to the memory on that side sometimes you don't have the luxury and i'll show you what i mean later on down the track when we do a bit of a throwaway to and or a quick unboxing in relation to actually let's let's just discuss it now Fred Ripper on the other hand what you need is something if you're going air cooling like this Pro Siphon Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite so I'm not going to open it up now but check it out guys Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite I've got a couple of these I've got one that's actually running in the computer just there plus this one as a spare for my next build surprisingly what it's going to be is another story so yeah let's move forward another factor is how the looks influence our consumer choices now i know all of you guys while big tower cooler people seem to lean towards simplicity of design and in turn reliability brought forward simplicity set aside lots of users are opting for AIOs due to LCD panel spirals of Jiffy pump lock designs. And by that, what do I mean? Well, unlike a large heatsink without the complications apart from a couple of suited fans, AIOs come with what seems at times a bird's nest worth of wires, fueling brain aneurysms flourishing due to the designed RGB bling sort after. So just like this one over here if you have a look at the back side of this this is approximate on the 360 millimeter rad this surprisingly hasn't actually even got an rgb sector and it's got this is about a quarter of the wires for it so that's that's a fair chunk of wiring that you have to get through and not to put it lightly the software is a nightmare at times as well compatibility if you have something different in the loop trying to get everything to run seamlessly trying to use the least amount of software possible 
if possible, because it taxes resources. Software over the years has become a lot cleaner, a lot better, a lot crisper, but it doesn't mean it's an annoyance as well. And if you have a set look and a set look in mind, understand that you might not always get it as well. So it's something to consider. A lot of planning is involved. If you're after that aesthetic, pressing forward, have a think about it. Because clearly thermals have been put aside in relation to what is water versus air cooling here. But hopefully in mind, people, hopefully in mind, choice should always first come down to the cooling requirements of your chosen CPU. Some CPU especially in age that is upon us, are just guzzlers of power. And where lots of power is used comes the concentration of heat in relation to what we need cooled over this bar IHS of our chosen CPUs. That being said, a general guide would be, you know, an i3, i5, i7, upwards of a 7600X, 77 if there exists, 78, I would probably shy on the verges of, say, a 240 millimeter radiator or air cooling. That would be adequate for a CPU of those calibers and those levels. And in that level, air coolers are generally priced accordingly as well and are generally a little cheaper and will give you more simplicity and better reliability than an AIO because when an AIO goes, it goes. If a fan just goes on the air cooler, you can replace that quite easily and keep on going. So that's something to consider, especially if you are first time builders, peeps. While 360 mil AIOs and high TDP rated air coolers, just like your Dark Rock Pro 4s, which are rated to 250 watts, or your Pro Siphon Elites, secret guys, rated to 500 watts, should be greatly considered for the more power hungry cpus which are out there okay so that's something that you have to be aware of when purchasing cooling for your cpus but like always comes exceptions to the rules so always be weary as a gpu will bring that gaming 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 it won't happen without a cpu that's firmly throttling of course and as a throwaway people the type of fans you would use in relation to your air cooling and or your water cooling more so in relation to what's attached to the to the fin stack on the radiators per se so the fins here on the air coolers and or what would get attached to this radiator here are your static air pressure variants of fans and if you have a closer look here, here's a really prime, it is a prime example of a static pressure fan. This is from the Tech Cooler. It's got a rubbery substance that almost grips air, okay? These fins are almost overlapping each other. And that's what signifies in this day and age a good static fan, generally speaking. Also, the higher the revs, the better the airflow it can essentially push. That's what a static pressure does. It pushes through the obstacle, which is in this case the radiator or the fins from the air coolers. So that's what you're looking for. Remember that you're not looking for high airflow fans if you are populating and or trying to, you know, add extra fans to a radiator and or for water or air cooling guys. If you guys are after more information about fans, please check out the link in the description below for fans, fans and more fans explaining everything about fans. Technus Corner and myself, uh, Subluca, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. I've done a really rounded video on explaining what and type of fans there are out there. All the all the jizz and all that jazz. Ooh, the jizz and the jazz. Ah, oh, jazz hands. No, uh, not for me. But yeah, so, you know, check that out as well. If you guys are just starting out and this is your first build, I suggest starting there, especially if you want to mod your case or something for the first time then uh, fans are always the way to go, honestly, guys. Um, that's where I started. That's where a lot of us started regarding our PC enthusiast passions and whatnot. So my name's been Seb Luca. Thanks for joining us at the Technus Corner, and peace out, y'all.